This is your tail. Good morning. I loaded up a few parts. We're going to try and return Let's to the dealer that we've had in the parts bin for 20 years. Let's go. Okay, good morning, boys. Hey. Good morning. We got some helpers today. Good morning. That's right. So, should we go see what Grandpa's working on out by the sprayer? Yeah. I'll show you. So Dad's got the sprayer out of the shop here, and uh, we're getting ready to put the nitrogen on the wheat. And so uh, we use these nozzles, these blue ones. These are SJ7s, uh, T-Jet nozzles, and they have seven little holes in them, which creates streams instead of a fan or a broadcast pattern. Helps get the nitrogen in the ground a little bit better and not burn the wheat. So he's uh, being very patient with some helpers at the moment. So in our tanks over here, um, in that one we have our, our 28. We've got a little bit of ATS that's left over from last year in this tank that um, hopefully it's enough for the first replication on wheat here, but uh, we got another couple of semi-loads coming yet. And uh, uh, we got should have plenty of 28 in. We got that last fall, bought it nice and cheap compared to what it is now. So that was a good move. So on this first uh, application, I'll have to look at my sheet to see exactly what we're putting on, but something like 25 gallons of the 28, three gallons of uh, ammonium thiosulfate, which is nitrogen and sulfur. We're putting that on to get some sulfur. Okay, we helped Grandpa get the uh, uh, monitor and the sprayer a little bit, put the rest of those nozzles on. He's gonna keep working on some stuff. And we are going, where? To the John Deere dealer. To the John Deere dealer. We gotta get what, some parts. What we do that? Up, um, don't touch my, don't touch my truck. Oh, you want to play that? Yeah. Here we go. We don't. Have All right. Well, we got our parts. We ordered some other parts for the sprayer for Grandpa. We're fighting a little bit over an orange golf ball, <laughs> and. Um, we're gonna drive around and see what else they got back here, and then we'll, we'll we'll be good to go home and start spraying wheat, maybe. They got a big Landall disc, don't they? Combines. Spare tires. Some spare tires. There's a '96 60. We used to have a combine like that one. This one. Yep. Don't, don't There's a nice air seater over there. What's that? There's a high speed disc. We got some balers, corn heads. Ooh, look at that. That barn's full of combines. That tractor's not the right color green, is it? No. No. There's an old combine and a combine like ours. And there's a nice tractor. Tractor that's not the right color. Chopper, it was back there. there. There's a nice planter, 24 row, 1775, nice. And then there's that. Hmm, how about that? That's a pretty nice looking air seeder. We may or may not be always looking for an air seeder. I don't know how much this thing is. I don't really know anything about it. It's used, they've put some parts on it to make it look like it's in good shape. Usually that's just window dressing for the most part got new blades on it um, so we have those two 1560 double drills that we use to plant wheat with that um, we are constantly saying would be really nice to upgrade to an air seeder this is a 30 foot air seeder 10 inch spacing this would fit the bill to plant wheat with the problem is it's really hard to spend a ton of money on something to plant 450 or 500 acres of wheat so uh, I'll look this one up online. We'll see. Maybe. I'm interested, but not for 100,000 plus. So, Dang, this planter is really nice. This has got hydraulic downforce, and it's an exact emerge. Um, really nice. We got spoked gauge wheels, plates. It's used. I don't know how much it is, but... This is a really nice planter, 24-0. It's bigger than what we would need. So the exact emerge is a high-speed option. It's got a brush belt delivery system that would um, allow you to plant up to 10 miles an hour. And it's got row cleaners. It's got double disc fertilizer openers there. This is a nice planter, 
more than we need and probably more expensive than I want to spend. A Surefire fertilizer. Is that got a in furrow and two by two? It might. It might. Very nice. Very nice. Okay. Well, after another stop to get some oil for the uh, four-wheeler Polaris, um, we're back at the farm. The boys have already run off to find Grandpa. So... I do have some other parts here. This is that uh, plastic cap for that gauge wheel on the uh, anhydrous bar that we've got to get put back on. And then I've got a bag here that should have a fair amount of things in it. We've got some screws, got some shims. Those are for the tractor. We've got some bolts. Yeah, this one here. This is the one that was broken and stripped out that U-bolt for on the um, Gator. So we're going to put some of that stuff on right now. I got two of those. But I only got one of those. Anyway. Um, and then we may do a little bit of mapping some fields here this afternoon. So also this morning I called uh, the one supplier where we bought our uh, ATS that ammonium thiosulfate sulfate from to see when they were thinking about bringing it out since we're using some. And he said, well, we can do it now. So that truck should be here like in the next 15, 20 minutes, which is, that's good because we need it. I think Dad actually did go out and spray a load of uh, fertilizer while we were gone, and now he's fixing all the leaks that he found when he did it. All right, then. There's our first load of ATS. I think we got two. All right, so we got a little bit of stuff to do to this gator to get it ready. We're going to do some mapping. So the first thing we're going to do is try and take this USB stick that I used yesterday to put the data on the 2630 and see if it works for this display too. And uh, I got to find the USB plug. I think it's on the back. Right down there. So should be able to turn this on. Maybe we got to have the key on. Nope. Yeah. Well, I'm not entirely sure that data is importing yet or not. It looks to be, or at least it's seeing if there is any data, so we'll see. Um, in the meantime, yeah. I'm replacing this U-bolt here. Here is the old one and the reason that we needed to replace it. I think I showed this the other day, but those threads are gone. So um, it uses these kind of nut bolt things that are inside threaded on there. I just I, I bought new ones of those and the U-bolt. They go in here, they're what I use to hold this uh, cedar in place. Yeah, we found one of the leaks. That pinched o-ring will do it. Easy fix though. Who's ready for a gator ride? Yay, me, me, me. All right, let's go see what we can find. Yeah. Maybe we'll try and map a field while we're out there. Okay, we've had some setup stuff we've had to figure out here. They've been very patient, haven't you? Waiting to go. And we've got this field brought up that's here. We're going to make a new boundary. And it's taken me a little while to figure it out, but I think I've gotten there. So we're going to hit this create boundary track. No, that's not what we want. We're going to maybe click here on boundaries. There we go. And what, make what was that noise? new exterior boundary. Daddy, I'm gonna figure this out. We're gonna go around the field and do it. I, really want to call. I got it. Boundary offset from the GPS, three feet over. So the line should be like right in here, where we want it. Right Time to go. See, that's many okay. Ones. Well, I figured it out. We got a new exterior, and then I remapped the two interior boundaries. I'd have to see what that acre said before to compare it to what yeah. it is now, but it's got to be pretty close and we should be good there so we got one we're gonna go back to the farm and see what uh grandpa's doing with the sprayer see if he's ready to spray some more looks like grandpa's gonna fold the sprayer up these two are like chomping at the bit to go ride with him and uh, they're quite upset that he is in it without them but he's not loaded up or anything yet so it'll be okay boys it'll be okay i promise just gotta be patient okay let's see how far up our uh, ats tank level went it tried it and didn't work it was plugged. Oh, none. Great. All right. Probably means it all salted out and it's plugging up the uh, thing in there. Great. Oh, look. Our tank level went up. Yeah, it looks like it had some. Yeah. Yeah. That is what it is. Ooh, that's a pretty good shot right there. All right, so Dad's getting the sprayer loaded up. Um, so on our wheat. Yeah, because we, we got it. 
sprayer. Yeah, because we got to ride in the sprayer. Anyway, so we're putting on uh, 28 gallons total right now. 25 gallons of 28, which is 2800, 28% nitrogen, and uh, three gallons per acre of ATS, ammonium thiosulfate, which is 120026. So it's 12% nitrogen and 26% sulfur. So that's what we're spraying. Um, I'll show you that from the cab, but we got we got these two that I really want to go. If you drop that down there, I'm going to put you down there to get it. No. No. Just, he's testing his luck. Very sticky. Yeah, I know it's dirty down there. But it's very sticky down there. Very sticky? Yeah. Okay, we got a full cab. You guys ready? Yeah. All right, let's go. And then unfolded. The uh, neighbor's got quite a fire over there. Burning some grass off. See how well it's going. Alright. Stop. Well, we're uh, spraying here. I don't know how well you guys can see that pattern, but there's basically seven streams that come out of each of those nozzles and it just drips on the ground instead of a uh, a fan or something like we were spraying a herbicide or a fungicide so um, that's to keep it from burning the wheat help it wash in a little bit better seems to work pretty good we really like these nozzles and um, yeah we'll just we'll keep going we'll go around the outside of the field and go back and forth until we run out the uh, wheat looks really good out here Didn't quite have enough to finish the field. Was that fun? Yeah. All right, he's gonna load up and keep spraying. We apparently are going for gator ride again. All right, we are back in the gator. Gonna go map some more fields. This one here is one of our uh, oats and radish cover crop fields. It was wheat last year. I just wanted to come up and take a look at it and see what things look like. It looks pretty good. It's fairly smooth. This might end up being plantable in the spring or in a month or so here. Um, you can see the, the radishes are really breaking down. All of this stuff is dead and should keep breaking down. Surprisingly, some green left here. I think this these are dead. Uh, but you notice the green streaks. That is actually volunteer wheat. So that is not going to die. Um, that that's all stuff that we'll have to spray it and kill it some roundup of work but um yeah this looks really good i'm still pretty happy with it and there's enough residue out here to hold it in case we do get some rain that it won't erode and get gullies and stuff so this this worked out really well especially if i do um just come up here and plant it and not have to worry about doing any spring tillage okay we got another field mapped and we found grandpa he's finishing spraying where we were and we ran out. Now well, he's doing the front field. We were in the back field back there. So we had to come and watch him. There he goes. What do you think? Let's go. Let's go. Should we follow him? Yeah. Okay, let's follow him. Pretty dang cool. It is awesome to be out here and back in the fields doing something. Yeah, this is good. It's almost spring, guys. Well, he's going to back up. We'll watch him. Stay out of his way. So our sprayer has uh, um, automatic boom height control, so it keeps that boom at the right height. And it also has automatic shutoff section control, so it turns on and off automatically to prevent overlap, which is pretty awesome. So away he goes. You guys know what I should be doing today? It is a beautiful day. Our ground is dry. It's March 17th. I should, I should be planting some soybeans. I should be, I'm not. Look at this field, guys. Hmm, looks pretty dry. Seems quite dry. My rock pickers. This video is about to get very exciting 
in very long. My apologies. Let's do it. Okay, so I just came back up to the farm here. I got these boxes out for dad. So this is a chemical, it's called Contain Advanced. It is from that um, MT, uh, uh, Ag Explore company that I've been trying to been working with a little bit. Um, that is a nitrogen stabilizer. And what it does is keep the nitrogen from volatilizing. So uh, nitrogen can turn into nitrogen gas through a process called vol volatilization. Um, generally, if you get rain, if you get rain on your nitrogen after you spray it within seven days, you're probably okay and you don't need that stuff. But they're trying to sell it to me. It's supposed to rain tomorrow. I don't think it's gonna do anything. We're gonna put that on. That'll do about 50 acres or a little bit more. And we'll see if it does anything or not. If it does, great. If it doesn't, is what it is so um i got that out so dad can put it in like i said it's only 50 acres worth it's not a lot okay with that i'm gonna i'm gonna get the bean planter out we're gonna go plant 10 acres ish of beans today here's the deal this video is probably already long it's about to get super long so i'm actually gonna split it we're gonna call this part one and I'm going to start a new video from now on for part two. So thanks for watching this. Hope you enjoyed it. The next one. Go watch the next one. And I'll release these both tomorrow. Probably one at eight and then another one at ten or something like that. So, um, yeah. Let's go do this. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, questions and comments. Go watch the next one.